Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Let's get started and look into our daily quiz. Let's look into the first question. Which of the following statements with respect to Financial Action Task Force is our incorrect? It was established in 1989 on the initiative of the group of 20 to examine and develop measures to combat money laundering. The Financial Action Task Force Secretariat is located at the OECD headquarters in Paris. The Financial Action Task Force currently comprises member jurisdictions and two regional organizations representing most major financial centers in all parts of the globe. Which of the statements are incorrect? Since it is asking for the incorrect statement, the answer to this is one only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to the Financial Action Task Force. Let us try and understand what are these options. When we look into the first option, it was established in 1989 on the initiative of Group 20. This is a wrong statement. Why? It was established on the initiative of G7 and not G20. So the first statement is incorrect. The second statement is right. The Financial Action Task Force is located at the OECD headquarters which is based in Paris. The second statement is right. The Financial Action Task Force currently has 37 member jurisdictions which means individual countries and we also have two regional organizations. Which are these two regional organizations? One, what we have is the European Commission. The other happens to be the Gulf Cooperation Council. So these two are the organizations. Rest of it are the countries. Is India part of it? Yes, India is part of it. What is this article speaking about? The article says FATF retains Pakistan on its terror funding grey list. When it comes to the Financial Action Task Force, what does it look into? It looks into money laundering. It looks into terrorist organizations. So what they have is two categorizations. One is what is called as Financial Action Task Force grey list. The other is the Financial Action Task Force blacklist. What is this grey list? These are the countries. Countries where there are terrorist activities that are emanating in that particular country but the government is taking efforts but the efforts taken by that government is not enough they are fighting against terrorism but some more steps have to be taken so those countries which have rules and regulations but are not meeting the intended standards are placed under grey list in the present situation we have Pakistan where measures have been taken but enough measures are not taken to meet the global standards which is called as financial action task force grey list so so Pakistan will be continuing to stay in the Financial Action Task Force grey list. Then we have something called as the blacklist. What does this blacklist? Those countries which do not take any measures whatsoever in spite of repeated warnings given by the Financial Action Task Force will fall under the blacklist. So countries which are taking measures but not meeting the standards will be grey list. But countries which are not even taking any of these measures in spite of repeated warnings will fall under the blacklist list as part of the assignment you have to put on the comment section which are these countries which are put up on the financial action task force blacklist Pakistan happens to be in gray list but the question that I'm asking you is which are the countries which are in blacklist there are about three to four countries please put them on the comment section now let's look into the next practice question with respect to Northern River Therapin, which of the following statements is are correct? They are one of the largest sea turtle species and also one of the most migratory crossing both the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. It is listed on the IUCN Red List as a critically endangered species. Which of the statements are correct? Since it is asking for the correct statement, the answer to this would be two only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to the Northern River Terrapin. Let us try and understand what are these options. When we look into the first option, the first option is wrong. Why? Because these turtles are native only to the Southeast Asia and they are not in the Atlantic or the Pacific Ocean. When we look into where they are present, they are primarily present in the countries of Bangladesh and India. They are possibly extinct in Myanmar. They are possibly extinct in Thailand as well. So remember, these are the turtle species which are present in Southeast Asia and are not 
the most migratory species and they do not move in Atlantic and Pacific Ocean. So the first statement is wrong. When we look into the second statement, yes, it is listed on the IUCN red list as the critically endangered. If you look into the IUCN red list, it is mentioned as critically endangered. So the answer to this would be B, which is two only. What are the major threats to this particular species? This particular species also has a number of threats. What are those? Exploitation because it is being used as a food item where there is egg harvesting as well. Dams are constructed. Commercial and industrial activities are taking place. Large scale development in those areas where these turtles live. Expansion of agriculture, land and water pollution all together have resulted in the major threats to these northern river terrapins. In order to overcome all these threats, in order to protect them, we have the Turtle Survival Alliance which has played an important role in their conservation. Now let's look into the next practice question. Consider the following statement. It is a carbohydrate enriched coating that covers the outside of many eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cells, particularly bacteria. It helps the pathogen to evade the immune system. The above statements best describe about Philly, Flagella, Glycocalyx, Endospore. The answer to this is Glycocalyx. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to one of the bacteria called as Fusobacterium. Let us try and understand what is this question all about. When we see bacteria entering our body, our bodies usually have an immune response to the pathogens. It can be the virus, it can be the bacteria. So our body starts responding to the bacteria or a virus. But how does the bacteria escape this? So a bacteria escapes from the host because of what is called as the glycocalyx. So what is glycocalyx? Glyco here stands for sugar and calyx here stands for coating because it has sugar coating, it protects against desiccation, attaches cells to the surfaces and helps the pathogen evade the immune system. So our body would give a response to the bacteria, but because they have this particular coating, Glycocalyx is what helps them evoke the host. So it helps the bacteria to become harder for the immune cells and they would not be able to detect it and ultimately it will evade the host and cause number of infections. The bacterial glycocalyx can vary in structure from bacteria to bacteria. It is capable of producing this particular glycocalyx depending on the structure, depending on the growth conditions, depending on the nutrients that are available in its environment. And also remember the glycocalyx is constructed of one or more sugars which is called a saccharide. So it is the glycocalyx which protects that bacteria and it evades the host immune system. Then we have flagella which helps to provide motility. Then we have fili which allows the cells to attach to surfaces or other cells as well. As part of the assignment, you have to put on the comment section which are the infections that fusobacterium can cause to the human beings as well as to other species. Now let's look into the next practice question. Which of the following are correctly matched? We have helicopters on one side and the countries that we have imported on the other side. AH-64E Apache attack helicopters from USA, CH-47 Chinook helicopters from France, MI-35 helicopters from Russia, Pole star from UK, which are imported to India from other countries and which of them are correctly matched? The answer to this is 1 and 3 only. Why? That is because the CH-47 Chinook helicopters is again not imported from France but from United States of America and Pole star happens to be the indigenously developed which is also called as Dhruv. Since first and the third option are correctly matched, second and fourth are not correct, the answer to this would be 1 and 3 only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article here makes a reference to different types of helicopters. The article further makes a reference of exercise Vayu Shakti. The exercise Vayu Shakti is conducted by the Indian Air Force. It is conducted at the Pokhran range every three years. So remember, it is conducted every three years and it was scheduled to be conducted in 2022 now because of the Ukraine crisis we have postponed it. So the aim 
of the exercise is to provide operational exposure, share the best practices among the participating air forces, thereby enhance the compatibility, forging bonds of friendship and ultimately create more bonhomie between the air forces. Now let's look into the next practice question. With reference to Indian economy, demand pull inflation can be caused increased by which of the following? Expansionary policies, fiscal stimulus, inflation indexing wages, higher purchasing power, rising interest. Select the correct answer using the code given below. The answer to this is 124 only. This happens to be a previous year question from the year 2021. So what is this expansionary policies? When the government starts spending liberally, when the government introduces more schemes and programs and when there is more money in the market, it leads to demand for the goods which is called as expansionary policies and this will increase the inflation. Then we have the fiscal stimulus, which once again is the government initiatives, which will increase the money in the market. It will once again increase the inflation. Then we have higher purchasing power, where people have more money in their hands. They are looking for more products. They want to spend their money. This may also lead to inflation. And inflation indexing wages and rising interest does not cause demand pull inflation. So the answer to this would be 1, 2 and 4 only. Now let's look into the fact of the day. The fact of the day for today's discussion is Gujarat International Finance Tech City which is also called as the Gift City. Where is it present? It is in the state of Gujarat. This happens to be a financial district. It is located between Ahmedabad and Gandhinagar. The idea for establishing this smart city or the tech city or the financial district originally was recognized back in the year 2007. But in 2008, we had the financial crisis. So they were not able to expand the provisions of this particular idea. And eventually, in 2012, physical infrastructure was laid. It was in 2015 that business regulations were introduced. And in 2017, they also saw international exchange being set up in this particular location. So what is this gift city? Basically, it is a type of a smart city where high quality physical infrastructure would be established. Let's say provision of electricity, water, gas, roads, telecom, broadband, everything will be provided as part of the gift city. In case there are IT companies which are currently placed in let's say Bangalore or some of the industries which are located in Mumbai or some of the other industries which are located in Gurgaon, they feel that the infrastructure in the existing city is inadequate or quite expensive this gift city is trying to attract them so the gift city will host international education zone entertainment zone convention center international techno park software technology parks and it is also hosting the IFSC, which is also called as the International Financial Service Center. So basically, this would be a center that would deal with the flow of finances, financial products across the entire world. So basically, this is a city which is conceptualized as a smart city. And we also have the establishment of the IFSC, which stands for International Financial Service Center. What is the objective of it? This will act as an alternative to the global financial hubs. We have the global financial hubs like the Hong Kong, Singapore, London, so on and so forth. And the gift city will be an alternative to these international centers as well. So what are the services given by IFSC? Fundraising services for individuals, corporations and governments, asset management and global portfolio diversification undertaken by pension funds, insurance companies and mutual funds, wealth management, global tax management and cross-border tax liability optimization, which provides a business opportunity for the financial intermediaries, accountants and law firms, global and regional corporate registry management operations that involve fundraising, liquidity investment, management and asset liability matching, risk management operations such as insurance and reinsurance, merger and acquisition activities among transnational corporations. All of this will be provided as part of the IFSC, which is based in Gujarat. So doing business inside the IFSC comes with a lot of tax regime exemptions, where a 10 year tax holiday with no security transaction tax, commodity transaction tax or tax on long term capital gains are present as part of supporting the IFSC in Gujarat. It is this that we have to understand in reference to this article. So this is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.